Yes, we're back. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Welcome back to Amaka Studios International Women's Month interview series. Once again, my name is Iviani. I'm the editor-in-chief and editorial director of Amaka Studio, the newly launched 360 media publisher for and by African women on the continent and in the diaspora. And I'm so excited to get this interview going today. It is the third installment of our International Women's Month interview series. If you haven't already, make sure you go to our IGTV section after this interview to rewatch our prior interviews with Victoria Kamani and Tenny the Entertainer. Shout out to Yagazier and your vitamins. I just took my vitamins before this as well. Everybody, be ta everybody in this chat should be taking vitamins. We are still in a panoramic. Um, and you should be taking vitamins daily. As you can see, I'm very serious about my health. So I had to stop and do that PSA. Take your vitamins and drink your water. I'm reporting live from New York. Let me know in the comments where you're from. Shout out to Mia Bell. The lovely Mia Bell. Zarin said boil the kettle. You better, you better have a filter as well. Make sure you have a water filter. Filter and boil. Lagos is in the building, of course. London is in the building. London is heavy. People from London say cheeky. I don't know what that means, but I like the way it sounds. Mozambique and India is in the building. Shout out to mommy. A lot of Nigerians are here. Sneak shot photography. Shout out to sneak shot photography. If you're just now tuning in, you did the right thing. Ghana is in the building. Rashida is in the building. I have to give Rashida a special shout out. She's probably not gonna want me to give her this shout out. But Rashida is the acclaimed, acclaimed internet archivist. And I will just leave it at that. Not, I'm not trying to blow up your spot, but everybody already knows your work, so. Thank you for gracing us with your presence in this interview. Rena said, where are my fellow Cameroonians? Shout out to Cameroon. South Africa is in the building. Hello, Oyinkan. Somalia is in the building. Egypt is here. London is here. Can someone explain to me what cheeky means if you're from London? Zarin, preferably you. Evil Rashida Hive, absolutely. If you know, you know. This is the, if you know, you know. That's all I'm saying. If you know, you know. If you don't, you're about to. Senegal, shout out to Senegal's in the building. Can 
can be used in any manner. That's still very vague, but I like the mysteriousness of it. Um, more Somali people in the building. Shout out to Somalia. I'm reporting live from New York. It's currently very gray and dreary and rainy here. We move. UK slang is very confusing. Shout out to Samantha. We have Haiti in the building. Big, big shout out. We're all very excited. Once again, this is the third installment of this interview series. So please, please, please make sure you go to our IGTV after this and catch up on our other interviews. And make sure you go to amaka.studio and read all the work that we've put out. We have so many contributions from people all over the continent, all over the diaspora. And we just launched, but we have so much up on the site already. So make sure you take a look. And we have so much planned as well. Shout out to Tahiri, Rwanda is in the building. Zarin said, Naomi is coming soon, and you better believe her, because that's Zarin. She's the person behind this. So <laughs> take her word for it. Who else would you want to see us interview? For this Instagram live series also doesn't have to be for this Instagram live series who would you want to see us interview on the website maybe on a podcast let me know in the comments Amaka be closing Women's History Month, someone asked. You just have to stay tuned and find out. Subscribe to our newsletter and stay up to date. Yeah, guys, yay. You already know how I give it up. We ask critical questions only. That's a great question. This will be an expansive discussion. I'm excited that you all are excited. Shout out to Brainwash Media. Zarin said we're loading. Naomi is coming soon. I could talk about Amaka's inception, but I think our CEO, Adora, would be better equipped to talk about that since this is her idea um, that she's been able to execute in about a year's time. We've been working behind the scenes for about six months, but Adora's been at it. This is her idea, and we just helped bring it to life. Um, but again, Adora doesn't like attention, but so what? <laughs> I 
Shout out to Adora. We're loading. We're hydrated. Shout out to Keith Nelson Jr. Getting ready. We are here. The one and only. Hi. How are you? Let I'm me do my well. introduction. <laughs> Let me do the, the introduction for the person who needs no introduction. Well, my name is Iveani. I'm the editor in chief of Amaka Studio, a new publisher for and by African women on the continent and in the diaspora. You are tuning into the third installment of our International Women's Month interview series. And we are live with one of the most recognizable and successful supermodels of all time, actress, activist, businesswoman, philanthropist, cultural innovator, over three decades in the fashion industry, Naomi Campbell. How are you today? So sweet. I'm very well, thank you. Sorry for being late. I was just got off filming the show and I was like, oh my God. I'm really, really um, happy and honored to be here for Marka Studio. I'm thank very, you so very much for joining us. Laura. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. Big shout out to Adora for conceptualizing this and, and making this happen. I have to ask, where in the world are you right now? Where are you located? Where I am right now, I am in the United States. I'm on the East Coast in New York. Oh, I'm in New York as well. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very dreary day. Yes. Yeah, I'm in New York. <laughs> I, I mean, I just got back off the continent. I was in the continent from December 4th through till just last week. Mm -hmm. yeah. So talk about yeah, that trip. I, I, it, it seems like you've been traveling. I mean, you're always traveling. Um, but I'm curious, what city or country right now has been inspiring you the most, personally and professionally? The continent. Absolutely, the continent. Um, I feel very motivated, inspired when I'm in Lagos, when I'm in Joburg, when I'm in Ghana, when I'm in Rwanda, Kenya. I don't know, I just, it's, there's a little bit of chaos, an organized chaos, as my good friend Rich says, but there's also peace at the same time. Mm. And I feel that you can think and get things done. I, I'm always, I, I come back always extremely inspired and want to get things moving. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think that as, you know, culture has shifted and I think the Western world, predominantly the Black Western world's conception or, or perception, rather, of African people and different African cultures has kind of changed over the years. Some would argue that it's a bit more positive over the last decades. Do you think your personal understanding and knowledge and perception of Africa as a whole has changed over the years and how so? I mean, first of all, my knowledge of Africa, I've, I'm, never, I'm never listening to what I hear. I've always been raised by my mother in the way of, my mother took me to see. And that's how I go on how I, my ability of feeling, seeing things, learning from myself. Um, yes. They are of change towards the continent, I believe. But I don't understand why there ever was, to begin with, the wrong perception. Mm. And, you know, I feel 
and 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 not included, no inclusion on on a lot of levels. Why? I think that's the operative question that people are asking: is predominantly how did we get to this place? Um, how can we get out of this place? And why well, has we it are, taken we so are long? getting out? We are on mm -hmm. an uprise because now everybody wants to run to the continent, right. and I feel. From what I see, it's a very, very, I mean, I don't like to say this word, and I have to say, I always don't like say this word. I don't say the word exciting, but it is a very exciting time to see what's about to happen. Mm. You know, in many different ways, you've got people from the diaspora that want to go back home. You have people that are now want to know their roots beyond just being African American. What does that mm. mean? Where do I really come from? They're asking themselves. Have you, is that a question that you've asked yourself as a, a British Jamaican person in the past? Or have you I don't kind have of to always ask been aware? myself because I know when I'm there, how I feel. This is where I come from. Mm -hmm. Through the channels of the slave trades of generations, we end up in different places all over the world. But when you're there, you know. And that's the inner peace that I feel, that I, I, that I feel. That's where I come from. Hmm. And more specifically, we know you've recently been appointed as the Magical Kenya International Tourism Ambassador. So can you speak a little bit about what that role entails and how that came to be? I, you know, first of all, when Minister um, Najib Barama uh, uh, gave me this uh, title. I didn't accept it right away, actually. Mm -hmm. I went, it was like a month later where I actually really came back and replied to it. And I understood that a lot of people didn't understand why Naomi, I'm not Kenyan. But I'm going to say this in my defense. I have given myself to the continent since 93, initially in, in understanding it. And then from that point on 94, my commitment has never faltered. So I'm sorry that I wasn't born on Kenyan soil, but I feel that I love Kenya as I love the continent. And so I'm not gonna, you know, I was sad to see some of that stuff and hear it, but it's not deterring me. If I can bring and help people to understand the beauty of our continent, including Kenya, I'm going to do that. Can I do it? I can do it. I've done it for many other countries and not even realized I was doing it. But I want to do it now for us, for our culture. I want people to see the beauty. And in this time of COVID that we've been in, and we're still in this challenging mm -hmm. time, Africa has been a place that people are now realizing, why didn't I? go there, invest there, be a part of. All my friends that have places in Africa were in a much comfortable place or setting than we could ever be in the Western world. It's a fact. I'm not saying that, that Africa doesn't have COVID. It does. It's just the setting, the nature, the freedom, and so I really feel a lot of things are going to shift. I also feel like people within Africa who live in other parts of Africa sort of just go into South of France or Italy. Yeah, they can do all of that. But they also now want to invest in beautiful sites of Africa. Mm -hmm. Don't forget Kenya. We have the Indian Ocean, the Turquoise Sea, where everyone wants to the Maldives to go to. But Kenya has that exact same seat. Mm -hmm. So speaking to that sort of, uh, you mentioned or rather alluded to that sort of visibility or social capital that you have to kind of promote the beauty of different African countries. And Listen, to I kind promote of... for my job. I'm a model. Mm -hmm. That's what I do with clothes and products. Mm -hmm. So. 
you know, I, I've seen that there's certain countries over the decades I would go to, which was not a hotspot, and then boom, it became one alongside my, not just me, alongside my friends and I. So I know that we can do it. We can shift mm -hmm. the consciousness. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems like most of the criticism are attached to this idea of the power that celebrities have and how they wield it. What power do you think from, celebrities have? I don't like the word celebrity. I never mm. have. And I don't consider myself a celebrity. There's an art mm. form of work which is called modeling that I do that I love. And because of people like you and all of you watching here have made me and put me to where I am. And, I will, and I'm very aware of that. But it's, it's just because your truth. If you love something and you... It, you feel good in a place, of course it's natural you want to share it with others. It's completely mm -hmm. natural. So that's it in yourself. That's promoting. That's it. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the famous people, the wealthy people who do identify as celebrities and who the public identify as celebrities? Who How may much way have... they see it and see us right. for their namesake of labels? Mm -hmm. Fine. It doesn't change the action that we do. Yes, the action and the intent. So to the, for the people who may not have the same uh, passion that you are explaining. Then right we want to educate have. those people. We yeah. want to educate them. And the only way to educate is to show them. Mm -hmm. And so the more people that they recognize on TV or movies, that's the way it has to be. That's the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. We have to use our platforms now. These, in these times that we're in, I feel like I embrace social media. And I never thought I would. I have to tell you, in 2012, I'm like, I'm not touching it. Because I was just intimidated mm -hmm. by it, to be honest. But it's important that we use our platforms to, yes, we have to promote our work. Of course, we have to do all of that stuff. That's, 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 that's just what we do. But we also have to use it to promote the passions and the things we love. Whether it's hip, it's trendy or not, just be you. Whoever mm. gets it, gets it, who doesn't get it, fine. Not everyone's gonna love you. Not everyone's gonna love us. And everyone has the right to their opinion. But right about now, you wanna find peace, you wanna find natural beauty. Continent. Do you think that your, your passions and your interests in African creative industries has been misconstrued with these criticisms? I don't really care if they're misconstrued because I do the action. I get up mm. during COVID and I fly to Nigeria and I support those designers 30 under 30. So they can, whatever, everyone's gonna have their opinion. I've never been someone, I say to them, God bless you, that's your opinion. What do you think about me? But it's not my business. It cannot stop me from what I'm coming here to do. And what I come to do is to support designers in all over Africa and young creatives that deserve to have the right of the platform that I've had. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned an interesting word, education, throughout all these education different mediums. Education is absolutely key. It's absolutely key. And it's so, what, that's, that's one of the things that fascinates me about our continent of Africa, how educated everyone is. Mom, you know it, you know, mom and dad, you gotta do what, my, you gotta please mom and dad first. And then you That's can go fact. on and do all the other things you wanna do. That's a fact. But That's you're not fact. gonna get, you're not gonna be able to be in theater arts unless you get that degree that mom and dad want. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the way that you've been using your platform, you have a new YouTube series, well, it's not so new now. You have no filter. It's almost a year. And, yeah, it's been almost and a year. And we, we um, uh, two days ago, because we come on on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, um, two days ago was our 50th episode, and we had the great, legendary, and iconic Jean-Paul Gaultier, who I've known since I'm 16. So it was such a great, um, it was great to be with him. And, you know, it, again, I'm not so thought out like you might think I am. I'm not, that, I'm not a strategic person. Maybe I should be. But um, basically that was just born because I was like, you know, COVID last year, March. What are my friends doing? I want to see what they're doing. I want to have a conversation with them, but I want to share the conversation. 
So that was just how that was born. There was no mm -hmm. planning. In 24 hours, Derek and I, and my team, and Chris, and Stephen, and Alex, we came up with the name, no filter, that was it. Sat, no lighting, just put on a stack of books, my iPad, no stand, I didn't have a stand then, oh, I have wow. one now, and put it on a stack of books, and that was it. That was it, mm -hmm. that simple. I mean, it's funny running around my house, you know, do my hair, do my makeup, for dressing myself. Um, this process has been very humbling for a lot of us. I'm grateful for the, the slow down, mm -hmm. not grateful for the lives that's lost. Um, but I do feel positive. I want to look for the positive out of this. Mm -hmm. I want to look for the, there's a positive, there has to be a positive out of this. And I believe that there is a positive out of this. Do you think at, at would you say at the root of, you know, your passions for doing the professional interviews and educating people about different places in the world, do you think the root of that is that you are a communicator slash translator uh, as your purpose on this earth, whether it's modeling? whether it's whatever other types of art you do, whether it's acting, whether it's all the charity work or whatever it is that you're promoting or amplifying. Do you, would you call yourself a communicator or a translator? I'm a communicator and I'm a connector. Mm -hmm. I'm a Gemini. I was, I was just about to ask that because I'm a I Gemini. I am a Gemini. You t I was, that's, I'm a Gemini. So as Geminis, we know that's what we do naturally. Yeah. And... And it's we want to share when we find something we love, we want to share with all of you. So mm -hmm. yes, that is, I don't, I know that, that I have that quality of myself, but I have that, but I also know I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And um, I will, it's, you know, meeting Tata, the late President Nelson Mandela for me is an experience that I can only share with you. And I did share with a lot of my friends in 1998, before I even started Fashion for Relief, mm -hmm. I started something called Frock and Roll. Frock and Roll then morphed into Fashion for Relief. So I've been doing these fashion shows and charity benefits and merging the two together since 98 is when I initially started it. And it's changed names and now it's become Fashion for Relief in 2005. But I shared, when I met him, I was like, I want everyone to meet him. So I took 78 people from New York City, hair, makeup, and all the models we know, to Cape Town to meet Tata. And that's something I hope they'll, and I know they'll never forget it. They, we were all with Tata for the weekend, and that's how I am. I want to share as well, mm -hmm. as connect and communicate. And what I love more than anything about being in this way is the trust that my team and you all give me. That, that's what helps me to motivate me more, is the trust that I get from my team, from the people who are behind the scenes that are supporting this, and from you all that have been here supporting me for this long. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. And it's not just me alone. And I always want people to know that. Behind every person, there's a village. You, you, you brought up uh, Nelson Mandela and the, the relationship you had going to South Africa in the 90s. April is uh, Freedom Month in South Africa. So with that in mind, I want to ask, what is the, or what was the most impactful thing that Nelson Mandela said to you or that you learned oh, from uh, so many things and also let me tell you sometimes it wasn't that he even spoke mm -hmm. sometimes it was that he didn't speak it just we just would sit there at the dining table holding hands but what I know is I'm truly blessed but one of the things he did tell me and it may sound cliche but do you know when someone, if it, I don't know if you guys have ever had this happen to you, when someone tells you something at a certain time, but you're not, you heard it, but it didn't register where you're going to take the real action on it. Mm -hmm. And then could be 20 years later, you realize, boom, now's the time to take that action. Now I really understood it. Now it's the drive. And that kind of happened with me and Tata. 
where he told me so many things, how to use myself to help others. You know, I say, Tata, I'm, you know, I'm not your perfect person. You know, I've got my issues. He didn't care. He never judged me. It was use yourself to help others. You will understand it. And he let me see how he did it, how he humbly did it with so many people around the world. I would see Tata around the world, not just in South Africa. And when he left on the 5th of December, 2013, I cried, I mourned, but the week later, I got this kick of a drive mm -hmm. that I'm not gonna, I gave him, a, I, it's not like I gave him a promise. He taught me something, he was in my life for a reason. And now, from that day point on, when I understood it, that's when I needed to put my, I was in action, but I went into deeper action. And that's mm -hmm. really it. You brought up an interesting thing. Um, you said that at that point, you, you weren't the perfect person. And I've seen in other interviews, you talked about yourself being Listen, a I've grown up in front of the world in the public eye. I mm -hmm. didn't get, to, I've, everything, every mistake that I've made is in the public eye. And I own my mistakes. I am human. I'm a work in progress. I've always said that. But I am real. Mm. What do you think has been your biggest personal development over the last few years? Being able to put out my vulnerabilities, being able to open up in this way and show you who I am, sort of living behind a picture of what you saw for many years. And being able to speak my truth, that I've always done. Hmm. Whether you like me, you don't like me, it's not gonna stop my, it's not gonna, you're not gonna take my voice from me. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel is the biggest misconception about you? Whether that's something you think about or not. I don't really think you about don't. it because I do agree that there could be a lot of people that don't like me. I, that's just how it is. Not everyone's gonna like everyone. Most important, the thing is, you have to like you. Mm. You have to feel comfortable in your skin mm -hmm. so that you can be comfortable with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And just going back to this idea of having a role in so this movement of how culture and perception is shifting. I remember speaking to Cornell West about how the sacrifices that have to be made within a movement can seem very daunting to people. And he said that we all can't be martyrs. No. If we were all martyrs, there would be no movement. So what would you say people with your level of visibility or just you yourself, what would you say your role is within this current movement, whether it's shining a light on different African creative industries or changing the perception of the fashion industry or whatever it is that you're passionate about, what do you think is your purpose and your role in the movement? My purpose, I don't even look at it that I'm in a movement. This is mm. the new way of life. Mm. This is where we are today. We are not going back. And I am here and grateful to witness this and grateful to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. I feel that I have to, con all I can answer to you that question is, I have to continue being me, living my truth, and being true to my integrity. Mm -hmm. That's all I can do. Mm -hmm. And just circling back to all of the different ventures that you had, including the interview series, I remember watching the interview you did with Oprah, where you went to do ballet again. Mm -hmm. And you were so passionate about it, about joining a class again for the first time in how many years that you cried yeah. because of fear, um, because of that commitment of doing it. Is there anything that you felt that passionately about that you would like to get back into or that you would like to do? Um, I really feel at this point in my life that I'm living my life and all the things I wanted to do or had fear about doing, I'm doing. Mm. What can happen? You, you can, you know, I mean, you're victorious, you fail. You, you pick up, you go again. But I, um, that was, I remember that, yeah, so having done something since I was three years old, ballet at the time, 
and not having done it for a long time and I'm walking into the class and that was the Bao Shui Ballet. And it was an advanced class because the yeah. beginners had finished. I was nervous, absolutely. But I am a nervous when I go on the runway to this day. I'm never going to be the person that's, I got this. It's not who I am as a person. I don't care how many fashion shows I've done. I'm nervous because I want to do and perform my best. Wow. And so, and I think that's, that's a good part. To, that's for me, it works for me to be that way. I never want to be like, I know that I can do this with my eyes closed. I never think that way. It's not who I am. I'm still enthusiastic. Or I'm going to be 35 years, April 15th, 2021, being in this business. Wow. And I'm still enthusiastic today as when I started. I mean, I, and I'm thrilled and just excitement and looking forward to just to see all these great young people coming out from the emerging markets that have never had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's, it's so interesting to hear that you're still passionate about this industry um, as someone with so many different interests who's kind of always been involved in different sectors of entertainment and beyond entertainment. Um, since the, the things movie. that I like to connect is always going to be fashion because obviously right. that's what I know and I've known that's what I know best. But I know other 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 genres, other mediums. Yeah. And I want to connect. That's the connecting part. I want to connect it. It can be connected. Mm -hmm. And because you... at the end of the day, the foundation of all businesses is the same. What's the foundation? The foundation of a business model. Mm. Mm. And speaking of connected industries, we've always been connected to the music industry, whether people have noticed that or not, always. Um, and I remember you did an interview with Lenny Kravitz, your friend Lenny Kravitz on, on No Filter, and he said that you are one of the best music curators, DJs that he knows when it comes to like doing house parties and everything like that. Well Brother, I, just, I love my brother. Um, I love music and raised with music, and I I have a collective taste of music. Mm. So I'll take you on a journey. So when I start playing, it's not a one hour thing. I'm taking on a journey. People don't move; they just stay and they dance and they enjoy. It's, it, I can play for five, six hours. It's when I, when I play, I play. I haven't played a lot recently, but Lenny has the most incredible, beautiful place where it just makes you want to play. So whenever I go there, I just play. It's, um, it's not something that uh, people can pay me to do. No, it's mm -hmm. I just do it. It's not one of that type of thing. It's just mm -hmm. I do it for my friends when I'm in that mood. It's like that. But it is a, it is a journey. Right. And so with that in mind, who are you listening to? Or what have you, what have you been listening oh, to? Everything. I go from classical to hip hop to 70s to 80s to soul to R&B to, to rock, you know, to jazz, to blues. I'm all over the shop. Mm -hmm. it's, my, it's, what, it's my mood. It's what carries me. Music makes me dream. Mm -hmm. And I've played more. And this is a time... In this period of time, I hope people who don't normally listen to music or played music, just have it on in the background low. It's so important for the psyche. Music is, and for, for mental health, I believe music is mm. important. I'm not a doctor, don't quote me, but for, I feel like just the mood, it can take, you know, if you're upset about something, you put on something, you'll forget it. It's, music is, you know, it's, it's just a, it's something that, we all can get it, and it definitely is a life, I think it's a lifesaver. Mm. Do you have a favorite artist right now? Oh my gosh, that is a very difficult question. I, I can't oh, ever pick it's a favorite. a very difficult question, you know. Um, and also I love to connect my friends from the continent to my friends in the West, and I want everyone to know. Like, you know, everyone knows I love Afrobeats. You know, everyone knows I love rock. Um, reggae, I mean, reggae is instilled in me since the, I think since I came out of my mother's womb, basically. Um, so, I mean, it's 
impossible for me to answer that question. Really impossible. I've got a lot of friends that you all know in music. And I have a lot of people that have passed on from music. Mm. Um, I've got a lot of heroes in music. Bob Marley being one of them. Mm. Beto Kuti being another. Jimi Hendrix being another. Janis Joplin being another. It just goes on. Ella Fitzgerald. Oh my God. <laughs> Etta James. Buddy Guy, who actually is alive. And um, Diana Ross, Chaka Khan, you know, mm. Whitney, Michael, they're just Prince. I mean, Prince, everybody knows Prince. Prince. It just goes Another on. Gemini. It's like, I can't even, you know. <laughs> is, is there an industry or, the, or a field that you dream of stepping into that you haven't yet? Is there, would you say that again, a, a role? An mm. industry, a field, anything. Maybe it's tech, maybe it's like education, maybe it's whatever. Is there anything you I'm always, I'm, I, I feel like I've got myself dipped in all of them. Right, right. I have a connect to each and everything you've just said. And when I need them or when I feel that they can bring something to the table of interest, I dip in, I'm not afraid to pick up the phone for something that I'm doing on a big scale for others. I'm not afraid to pick up, I, for me, it's harder to pick up the phone and say, can you do this for me? Right. But when it comes to others, I can do it, no, no can right away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you'd easily be qualified as, or deemed successful in every field that you've entered into. But I'm curious to hear, um, as we're approaching the 35th anniversary of your time in this industry, what is your definition of success? <sighs> My definition of success. Mm. It's really my strong family, long line of women, of strong women in my family. The three Ds, I call it. Determination, drive, What's the other one? Determination, drive, and uh, no, my God, my three Ds. Where's my three Ds? Hold on a second. Determination, determination, drive, and dedication. Hmm. That's the three Ds. Yeah. The three Ds. That is definitely worth remembering. I have one more special question. The only question that I've pulled from the audience. There is an acclaimed internet archivist who runs the account How to Be an Effing Lady, um, who does How fashion to be archives. Effing Lady? Yes. I'm mm. sure you've probably seen the account. Um, I haven't. So, uh, this question is from Rashida, and she asks, what is the favorite shoot of all time that you have ever done with Steve and myself? Oh. Oh, the king. Um, Steve and myself is family to me. And I mean, I don't know, I go from the beginning because they, he brought me here for American Vogue when I was 16 years old. And we did those pictures, they call, he calls those pictures of me Bambi. Every mm -hmm. single shoot that I have done with Stephen Mizell, for me, has been special. Mm -hmm. None of them, none of them, I don't look like, some, none of them look like any of the others. They all completely different. He taught me. He, ta he almost trained me in how to take out from myself, which I didn't know I could do. You know, I knew about dancing, remember, when I was coming from the dance background, so then I used that to interpret my modeling or what I thought I should do for poses. But when I got to work with Stephen, it was a different thing. And he pulled out of me something that he put, changed my whole way of looking at the, he made me show me that modeling was an art form. Mm. And to work with him from 16 years old to this very day, 35 years later is, I mean, and again, I'm not new obviously, but he transforms me every time. And he does it effortlessly. And that's why he is who he is. He truly is the king. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, there's even a picture where once 
It was an advertising where he shot me as the girl and then they had to shoot the boy. And he decided, no, you're gonna, I'm gonna make you look like the boy. And he did. Is he that did. your favorite shoot or you still can't Well, it's it? just, I did so many transform transformative shoots with him where you had to look, is that Naomi? And that's the kind of shoots I love because they're challenging, they're fun, it's a character, you become someone else. That's all, that's what makes it fun. That's why I love what I do. Mm -hmm. My I last mean, question. You know, I mean, it's, it's fun to do. I mean, honestly, I don't want to do just pictures in a white backdrop anymore. I find that a little right. bit like, you know, I want some challenge out of it. Challenge out of life. <laughs> but is, is it hard to find challenge being that you've done, I mean, I don't know if we could say everything, but pretty much everything when it comes to I challenge to myself every single day. Hmm. No, it's not hard. I challenge myself on something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it can be something minute, but it's a challenge to me. Good, mm -hmm. I, I want to push myself. I don't want to stay redundant. I want to, I want to, I learn every day something. Um, work in progress. Still a work in progress. Still. So my last question, how, do you want to be remembered? Oh my goodness. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Just to be remembered. I mean, mm. I don't know. Just to be remembered is a powerful statement. Just wanting to be remembered rather than choosing what you can be remembered as. Because I don't think we have a choice. People will make that choice for us in how they remember us. Absolutely. So on that note, Naomi Campbell, thank you so much for joining us for International Women's Month. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you missed the beginning of this interview, you can catch it later on. My name is Yeani, and I am the editor-in-chief of the newly launched Amaka Studio for and by African women. And we are tuning out. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you so much. Thank you. And congratulations on Amaka Studio. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Adora. So yes, thank, thank you, Adora. Thank you. Okay. Bye, all. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.